what are the five things I should buy to get started? What are, what are those five items? All right. So I'm going to start off with both legumes and whole grains. I'm packaging them together because actually their effect on the gut microbiome ends up being quite similar. Here's what you get with these two things, legumes and whole grains. They are very packed with fiber, resistant starches, and polyphenols. And these three things, these are the three main prebiotics described food for the microbiome. So fiber, resistant starches, and the polyphenols, these are the three main classes of prebiotics that we're aware of. Now you have to understand, like prebiotic is good for your gut microbiome. It also means that you are leaning on your gut microbiome to help you to process and unpack these foods. This is why many people struggle with them because they're so high in prebiotics that people are struggling if their gut is not in a great place. So nonetheless, I start there. I'm going to do those two. And then like everyone needs to include leafy greens in their diet. There's a bazillion varieties of them. They have almost no calories and they are so jam packed with nutrition. And it's just, to me, it's like, how can we talk about nutrition, and not include leafy greens in some capacity, choose the ones that you like, switch it up, try different ones. You know, there's so many last two. Okay. Here's where I think it gets a little more fun. So first I'm going with sprouts. If you're not sprouting, you should be. You're going to make Doug Evans happy. <laughs> well, Doug Evans has, Doug, Doug Evans has a lot of valid points. So, and look at the energy that comes from eating sprouts all day. Right? So look, you could live in Brooklyn Heights and, or you could live in Manhattan and have a 400 square foot apartment. And guess what? You could have a garden growing inside your apartment and all you need is one square foot on your kitchen counter. That's it. And it requires no soil. It takes about five minutes a day total. And it is literally the freshest food on the planet because there is zero time lapse between when you harvest and when you consume. It's highly nutritious. When we sprout, it's almost a miracle from nature where the legume or the seed, it increases the fiber, it increases the protein, it increases the vitamins, and they also will take on these medicinal properties. So for example, broccoli sprouts are one of my favorites and they're extremely high in this phytochemical sulforaphane that is a cancer destroyer. So, so to me, it's like, if you're not sprouting, you should be, you could have a garden in your kitchen counter. And one of the other beautiful things about sprouts is that people love to talk about food deserts. People, you know, one of the things that they'll say about a plant-based diet is they'll say, well, this is not very accessible. Sprouts are completely accessible. You can buy organic seeds and legumes, very inexpensive in bulk. They will store for an entire year and you just grab literally anywhere from two tablespoons up to a half of a cup whenever you need it, a half of a cup of lentils, Jason, when you sprout it, it takes three days and it goes from a half of a cup of lentils into four cups of sprouted lentils. And you are like reducing the anti-nutrients and cranking up the fiber protein and other vitamins. So I, I, I love sulforaphane and I love lentils. We do a lentil pasta every Monday in our house. Love it. In my new book, I talk about histamine intolerance. You can actually replace the enzyme that you need for histamine intolerance. It's called DAO, diamine oxidase. You can actually replace the enzyme by sprouting peas. Wow. I mean, that's amazing. <laughs> it's like medicinal. So, all right. Number five, you know, I am, I think, perhaps most well known for pounding the drum of diversity within our diet. I've been doing it since 2017 which is the first time that the American Gut Project shared their data publicly. I was actually there when they shared it. I was sitting in the front row. And ever since that moment, I've been pounding this drum. But now I'm adding, I'm like tapping the symbol of fermented foods. All right, so I'm pounding the drum and I'm tapping the symbol at the same time. Fermented foods, we're not consuming fermented foods. It's not part of the American diet. And a study out of Stanford of less than a year ago, they took a group of people and they put them on a high fermented food diet for 10 weeks. And at the end of those 10 weeks, they had enhanced diversity within their gut microbiome and reduced measures of inflammation. To me, this was basically like the moment where fermented foods went from theory to validated by science 
published in the journal Cell, one of the top journals on the planet. And so it, it basically says we have this opportunity where we, if we quite simply start adding fermented food to our diet, we can really be adding a new dimension to our health beyond just adding varieties of plants. Add the fermented food and let's focus on that too, because this is another way we can amp our digestive health. So get the sauerkraut, hold the hot dog in the bun. Yeah, get the sauerkraut, but like think of all the varieties out there, you know, not just the sauerkraut, but there's the kimchi. I have recipes for sourdough bread that you can make at home. I mean, there's, you can't create a healthier, a healthier bread than when you actually purchase the flour yourself and make sourdough. Not to mention, you know, there's like healthy forms of sodas. So like kick the soda to the curb and instead have something that's a fermented beverage, you know, and then there's like yogurt and there's kefir. I mean, to me, the healthiest form of dairy that exists is kefir.